you will, open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Glory to God. Those of you online, help me turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I know you have your Bible, your phone in your hand. Glory to God. And we're going to <clears throat> read this scripture. And um, we'll just read five or six verses and then we will move on. Uh, now, Father, here we are standing in your presence. We absolutely need you. God, speak to us and in through us to these awesome people of God, these precious saints of the Lord. God, encourage our hearts today that we understand how to please you, how to walk up right before you, how, God, to represent you in the earth. And so, God, bless us now. Open our hearts that we might receive the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse number 11, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by keep not keeping his commandments, not keeping his judgments, that Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, not keeping his commandments, not keeping his judgments, not keeping his statues, which I command you today, least when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who brought you out of bondage, oh my God, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which there were fiery serpents and scorpions and a land that was thirsty where there was no water, who brought the water for you out of a flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers didn't even know about, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Look at somebody and tell them the test is working in your favor. To test you that he might do you good in the end. Then you shall say in your heart. Look at your neighbor and tell him, please don't say this. Come on, look at somebody and tell him, please don't say this. My power and my might, the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. It is the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth. A few weeks ago, you may take a seat. A few weeks ago, I was ministering at the end. I'm not sure, glory to God, all that went on. But what I do remember is that we talked about glory to God. We talked about that there was a shift taking place. There was a shift. And God had spoken to me, glory to God. And in that moment, I heard the Lord say, shift. Tell the people it's time for a shift. And some didn't understand, glory to God. And to be real honest, I couldn't all together tell you exactly what God was saying. I wasn't completely, completely clear about all that God was saying. But I heard that word, shift. And then this week, I began to look at this, this scripture. And the Lord dropped in my spirit. God has given you power for your shift. Tell somebody God's given you power for your shift. God's given you power for your shift and what you've got to understand. Let me just tell you that the children of Israel, glory to God, were going through the wilderness. And, and there's a place that always rings out. I always remember this name from the first time I heard it. Glory to God. In my early days of salvation, they talked about a place called K uh, Kadesh Barnea. Curtis Kadesh Barnea. Glory to God. Y'all to look it up. But Kadesh Barnea, as the children of Israel were going through the wilderness and there was no water, there was an 
oasis in the desert. This place actually represents a, a saving place in the wilderness of wandering is what they call it. And Kadesh Barnea, as they were going about and there was no water, glory to God, they came to a place called Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was an oasis in the desert. Glory to God. It was a fruitful place. When they got there, glory to God, there was water. Glory to God. There were, they had places where they could plant fruit and grow, plant vegetables, and they could, they could sustain themselves at Kadesh Barnea. You know, when you've gone through a difficult place, y'all don't know nothing about this, but when you've gone through a hard place, you, you wouldn't understand. But when you've gone to a time when look like ain't no water in your life, you glad when you get to a place where there's an oasis in the midst of your trouble. Glory to God. And, and, and the children of Israel got to a place called Kadesh Barnea and it was a wonderful place. God had led them there. The problem was that they got to Kadesh Barnea and they stayed there. God did not mean for them to stay there. He only gave them that place as a temporary place, a holding place, a stopover. They weren't supposed to stop. They was only supposed to pause. They stayed there 30 eight years. Some of us today is at a place where God said, it's time for you to shift. You was only supposed to stop there. You weren't supposed to stay there. Glory to God. You're supposed to grow. Come on, tell somebody, grow forward, grow. Come on, tell them, grow forward. Glory to God. Glory, you got to grow forward. You got to grow forward. And so, glory to God, a couple of weeks ago when the Lord dropped in my spirit, it's time for a shift. I heard the Lord this week talking about the fact that some of the saints, glory to God, have gotten to a place where they've gotten comfortable in where they are. They've gotten comfortable in their service to the Lord. And they're not going to do anymore. Glory to God, don't push me, glory to God. And they got enough nerve to glory to God, even when they're doing Doing things they ought not do, even because they get comfortable with it. The Lord haven't chastened them hard enough yet. Glory to God. And they keep getting worse and worse, and they'll look at you and say, Don't judge me. Can I talk to five people today? Glory to God. We didn't pick up what the world that don't judge me, don't judge me. I'm not, but the Lord is absolutely judging you. I'm not a judge, but I am a fruit inspector. Glory to God. I do understand when the fruit are not right. I do understand, glory to God, when you left that fruit on the tree too long, glory to God, and it rots on the tree. I know I'm telling the truth because I got some pears in my backyard. They were wonderful, glory to God, two or three weeks ago. But now, glory to God, they all soft. Glory to God. There's no firmness in them. And some saints are just that way. It's time for a shift. It's time to do something different. It's time to seek more of the Lord. It's time to rededicate yourself to the will of the Lord. It's time to stand in the presence of the Lord with your hands stretched out and saying, Lord, have your way in me. We become, glory to God, wonderful. We become extremely proficient at determining what other folk could do. Glory to God. While of our own behavior, lifestyle, and habits, we have an issue. We can't pinpoint nothing. <laughs> glory to God. I thought I'd get more amens than that, but I'm grateful for the ones I got. It's time for... Tell somebody time for a shift. Time for a shift. Glory to God. You can't. It's time, glory to God, to do like mama and him say, put your hand to the gospel plow. Some of the ground that we are walking on is hard. Nothing can grow. The fruit of the spirit no longer produces in our lives. And the fruit we have, we just pull it out of the freezer and let it thaw out. It's old fruit. It's three, four years old. All the juice gone. Time for a shift. Time for a shift. Glory to God. 
This is not the time to declare, I've occupied this space. I've done this ministry. I've been here so long until I've gotten comfortable. Glory to God. Bishop Macklin always say comfortable people rarely do great things. Comfortable people rarely do great things. Comfortable people just sit down and they know, well, I go to church and I sit down and that's what I go to. That's what I do. I go to church and I sit down. I go to church. I don't need to go to church. I know God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Y'all know y'all heard that. But you've got to understand, glory to God, uh, you've got to understand that it's time to shift. It's time to, glory to God, challenge yourself to step up to another level in serving God. Yeah, whatever you're doing, whatever you've been doing, do some more or do something else. Put some air in them tires. They almost flat. Can I talk to five people today? Glory to God. I hope this is not too hard, but I do want it to be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. I want it to be that way. Glory to God. You can't grow no new vegetables, fruit. Glory to God. What you need, you can't sustain yourself when the ground you're standing on is so hard. No water has touched it. The water of the Holy Ghost has not passed over it. There's been no spiritual rain. Glory to God. And nothing can grow. It's barren land. Oh, we know how to shout. We know how to Come in a Honda, kill a mosquito, Chevrolet, Chevrolet, Chevrolet. We know how to do it all, but we do it all based on what we know, not based on what's inside of us. Can I talk to five people? Glory to God. You got to get to that place where you decide comfortable is unacceptable. Comfortable. It's unacceptable. I've got to do some other things. There are some people who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they are waiting for me to come by their house. They're waiting for me to knock on their door. They're waiting for me to come by the bushes that they live in. They're waiting for me to bring them a bag of groceries. They're waiting for me. Glory to God. I can't let everybody else go. I'm not worrying about the other church. I don't care if I'm not in the evangelism department or the mission department. Glory to God. I'm like, glory to God, Philip, it doesn't matter my title. I've got work to do. God's counting on me. The Lord has ever dropped in your spirit. You ought to go do thus and so. Then guess what? You ought to go do. Thus and so. Glory to God. Philippians 3 and 12. Paul, Paul was dealing with that church at Philippi. And as he's dealing with the church at Philippi. Paul he begins to command them and give them directions. I should say concerning how they ought to better serve the Lord. And he says I'm telling you this. But it ain't like I've already attained. Or have already been perfected. But I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Would you look at somebody and tell them the Lord called you out to do the business of the kingdom. He did not call you to sit on the chair. He did not call you to, to critique everybody else. He did not call you to sit and watch you in the grandstands when you need to be on the field. Can I talk to somebody today? I'm almost through. Look at somebody and tell them it's time for a Holy Ghost shift. Time for a shift. Glory to God. When we look back over our lives, come on. You can say God's been good to me. I know I'm telling the truth. It doesn't mean, glory to God, that you have everything you desire. Or, or, or that you have so, don't have some unfulfilled dreams. 
Doesn't mean, glory to God, that you haven't had some difficulty in your past. Glory to God, not everybody was on drugs. Not everybody was an alcoholic, glory to God. But many of us have deal with some trouble in our lives, some trauma in our lives. But understand, through all of that we've gone through, God has kept you in your right mind. He kept you in your right mind. He kept you in your right mind. Sometimes he had to bring you back. But you're in your right mind now, I hope. Glory to God. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, God's been good to me. God's been good to me. Glory to God. But we got to be careful, glory to God, that even though, glory to God, God's been good to us and we're blessed, that we don't drift into lazy. That we don't drift into slothfulness. Glory to God. Somebody will do it. They'll get it done. We got to be careful that we don't get satisfied and comfortable and that we halt our progress for the Lord. When we look at this particular scripture, the Lord tells them, I brought you out of bondage. I blessed you. I place you in places where you got houses you didn't be. Glory to God. And I can say to y'all, y'all got you driving cars you didn't manufacture. You got jobs, glory to God, that you didn't create. We making more money, glory to God, than our parents even ever thought about. I remember when I was a youngster, I guess I must have been in, oh, I don't know, maybe the, maybe the, I've been around a little longer than a lot of y'all, glory to God. But I remember. My father was working at Travis Air Force Base, civil servant, glory to God, the meat cutter, glory to God. And I remember a civil service. I remember when he got a raise and he was, he got, no, he got a raise. He got a big time raise because he hadn't been on the job that long. I remember, glory to God, I must have been in about the ninth or 10th grade, glory to God, ninth grade, glory to God. And Pop got $4.35 an hour. He was big money. <laughs> we, he went out and got him a 69 Cadillac. Still gray with a half blue vinyl top and blue leather interior. And every chance I got, I spotted it. $4.35 an hour. And one of my grandchildren just got a job and First job he ever had, he making $21 an hour. We are doing well. We're more blessed than we ever have been. Glory to God. And yet we're less faithful than we ever have been. We complain because our car is three years old. Mm, this old thing, I need me, <laughs> glory to God. We got so many clothes in our closet, glory to God. We got to move some, yeah, to get another one in there. I ain't knocking it, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, glory to God. Uh, trying to harm anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Glory to God. That's wonderful. But the Lord said, when you get to that place in your life, you need to understand it is God that gives you the power to gain wealth. It's God that opened up the door for you. It's God that caused that car to be in your driveway. It's God that caused you to live under that roof. It's God. It ain't cause you so smart. It ain't cause glory to God of what your family name is. It ain't cause you so good looking, glory to God. God did. Let me tell you what happened when Jesus began to deal with the, the disciples and he gave them a parable. And it's in, in Luke chapter 12. It says, then Jesus spoke the parable saying, there the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Since I have no more room, I got so much stuff. 
So he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my old barns and build a greater one. There, will, there I will store my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, <laughs> glory to God, soul, you know, y'all don't say it quite like that, but you know I'm telling the truth. Soul, you have many goods laid up for years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, fool. Now he said, soul. God said, fool. This night, your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be? Be which you have provided. The children of Israel will look like we've been channeling them. Because we got so much stuff and we, it's so easy to walk away from God. Even times of tithing. It is as though sometimes the offering and the tithe, it's as though you gave it to yourself, not God blessing you with it. And then you let somebody who don't even serve God tell you how to serve your God. Ain't no such, you don't have to tithe. You don't have to give no offerings. Glory to God. Getting God is free. Where are you going to get him? On the corner? Somebody got to pay for the building. Where you go to church? Glory to God. Tithing ain't even in the New Testament. That's because they haven't read the New Testament. Because if they did, they'd find it. Jesus said, glory to God. Yeah, he said, he said, those Pharisees, they tithe cumin and anise and all of those things. He said, they ought to have tithed that as well as obeyed the scripture. Look at somebody and tell them it's time for a shift. You've got to understand not only that, and I'm closing with this, not only that, but you've got to understand that in your shifting, you're going to be able to minister to somebody else who needs ministering to. You can't just live this thing for yourself. Can I talk to somebody? God is requiring you to tell somebody else, to show somebody else, to lift somebody else, to mentor somebody else into the kingdom. We get so caught up with ourselves, not y'all, but some other people, the church up the street. We get so caught up, glory to God, with me, my four, and no more. That we don't spend time trying to build and bless and encourage and lift somebody else. Hmm, they got a mama, let their mama take care of it. All I got is enough corn for me and my grandbabies, my children, my nephews. Listen, share some of that corn with somebody else. You done ate so much of it, you don't even appreciate it like they would. Can I talk to somebody? Listen, you have, God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. You can bring somebody else in. And maybe, maybe, maybe they were just looking for a shift in their lives. Maybe they wanted a change just like you did some days ago. I remember, glory to God, even myself, glory to God, I got to a place where I needed a shift. I needed a change in my life. I had a good job. I was making good money. I was all the things that I was doing in my own business. I was doing well. But there was a part down on the inside of me that needed to change. My car was new, but my soul was old. I needed a change. And somebody ministered to me. Somebody came along, glory to God, and they renewed what God had already planted. God bless you, first lady. Glory to God. They renewed what God had already dropped in my spirit as a child. And I needed somebody to talk to me. Anybody in here ever needed somebody to just get you closer to God? 
to bring you into, to bring you closer to, to, to sharpen you a bit. When you shift, your shift will stop, make it, will cause you to not keep worrying about you and to look outside of yourself. Shift so that it's not all about you. The Bible says in Corinthians, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Look at somebody and tell them God has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Come on, tell them you don't only live for yourself, but you live for others. What are you talking about, pastor? The Lord said you are the light of the world. You're a city that sits upon a hill and you can't be here. He said you cannot be hidden. So whether you tell them or not, glory to God, they know there's something different about you. So show them what God has done for you. The next verse of that 2 Corinthians says, now all things are of God, verse 18 who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at somebody and tell them, God's going to use you. Some of y'all ain't helping me. God's going to use you to bring others to himself. You have the power to do that through the Holy Ghost. You have the power to live such a life Glory to God, so that in their dark times, their dark times is lighted by your presence. The words you speak are life. Glory to God. When they, when you begin to tell them your testimony, glory to God, right now you look like everything you've been walking with Jesus all your life since you've been about two. But when you begin to share your testimony, they can see that God can pull you, somebody said, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Can bring you from darkness to light. Glory to God. He says, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Would you look at somebody and tell them, the word of reconciliation is in your mouth. Speak life to somebody. Speak life to them. The enemy wants you to sit on your gift. He wants you to hide it under a basket. Understand that the devil has deployed demons to eliminate the possibility of you, your family, or your friends enjoying your promised destiny. And so you've got to understand, in order for you to make the devil messed up, you've got to shift. You've got to go to work. You got to get up off your chair. You got to stop doing what just makes you comfortable. Press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, say press. Listen, the devil tries to damage or destroy. He wants to dispatch you into disillusionment, depression, and death. But thanks be to God. I remember this time for my shift. <laughs> it's time for somebody ought to just everybody stay. Everybody stay. I'm about to. Everybody stay. Glory to God. I asked you last couple weeks ago, I asked you to just shift a little bit. I asked you to, to move over just a little bit. Move to your right. Just move to your right. Everybody. Just move to your right. Just move. That's right. Glory to God. That's good. You stay right there. Glory to God. Find your chair close by there if you want to sit down. But if you want to stand, stand because I'm about to close. You got to understand. That God has blessed you with so many blessings. He's opened so many doors just for you. God has caused folks that didn't even know you to bless you. God has turned some things around. Glory to God. That other folks wanted to go another way. People with more degrees didn't get the job because God said you were going to get it. God did it for you. God bless your children. And you know, some of us got some knucklehead children, not y'all. 
Got some knucklehead children. But God brought them home safely. And some of us got some good children, but the devil don't mind. He'll kill good children just like he will knucklehead. Some of us were riding on the highway, and the accident happened two minutes before we got there. Because God had his hand on your life. So how are you paying back? Well, shift. Go to work. Go from first gear to second gear. Go or go from second gear to third gear or go from third gear to fourth. Whatever it takes, get to the next level of ministry. Sacrifice required. Come on, say sacrifice required. Sacrifice required. You don't get to glory to God to get to the next level without pressing your way. Without commanding yourself to get up and go anyway. Without commanding yourself to stop looking at the circumstance and look at your God. You have what's necessary for your God-given shift. And if you do it, God's going to bless you. You think you're blessed now? Just do what God says to do. You think things are, your, your barns are full now? Just obey God. Glory to God. By your heads. Father, we thank you now. We praise and magnify you. We give you glory. God, we thank you because you called us, God, to the next level in you. And uh, promised that if we obey you, God, you would do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. You, God. Or our deliverer. You, God, are our healer. You are the light to our path. And so, God, now we stand obedient and willingly obedient to your will. Have your way in our lives now. God, you see the sons and daughters under the sound of my voice. God, some of them, God, even right now, have burdens on their shoulders. Some of them, God, even right now, are not sure which direction they'll take when they leave here today. Some of them, God, not sure what's going to meet them when they get to their home. But God, you know, and you will bless them if they decide to shift. In Jesus' name, bless them, Lord, and we praise you. Come on, clap your hands, everybody, for the Lord. Glory to God. God bless you all. Amen. It's good to see First Lady. Come on, clap your hands for her. It's good to see you. Thank you, Sister Jessica, for, for going with her. Amen. Praise God, all of you all. Amen. You can stand. We're getting ready to go home. Glory to God. But I just wanted to just say to you, glory to God. The Lord is calling us to another place, and we're never going to get there if everybody, don't, you know, you put your hands to the plow. And everybody's got to push. Come on, say it's uphill. But if we all push, there's no problem. Glory to God. We'll get there. If everybody pushes, amen. If everybody does what's necessary so that the ministry can be blessed. We talked about this and I'm, I'm, we talked about this in Bible study. Everything necessary for powerful living in the kingdom of God it's in this house. Every gift, everything necessary, every talent, it's in the house. Don't hold back your blessing from me. Amen? Don't hold back your gift from the body of Christ. Because if you give yours, and I give mine, and they give theirs, Everybody going to be blessed. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Father, thank you for the service today. We pray, God, that you'll bless us even as we leave this place, but never your presence. Keep us in the center of your will, the hollow of your hand. God, we give you glory and honor, and we thank you for the day. Thank you for the people. Thank you for God's Sunday school. Thank you, God, for every song sang, every hand that clapped. Thank you, God that you blessed us to be here today. Thank you, God, that we're alive and healthy enough to make it here today. God, we 